program together. I am just so overwhelmed by uh, your reception. And Mr. Esteban, he, he was always on the phone calling me and are you coming? And then I almost didn't make it here today because, you know, uh, I had the death of my pastor and we had his funerals today and we were, and that's where we're just coming from. And, you know, I, I really didn't even have time to prepare anything because this week has been like crazy. All right. All right. But anyway, I would just like to thank everyone. And i like to thank everyone for standing behind me in my fight for justice. And particularly, i like to thank my family. My family has been with me all the way in everything I do. And I never thought I would be out here as an activist. Never even gave it a second thought until after the death of my son. But after the death of my son, it has broaden my horizons on how cruel that law enforcement can be to people of color, Latinos. And we know that there is abuse in all races, but we feel the greatest impact. <coughs> and we need, we have to address this. We just can't let it keep going and going. And being that my son no longer has a voice, I have to speak out for him. And if I don't speak out, his legacy may die. And I just refuse to let that happen. <laughs> when we speak of social justice and social injustice, I mean, as the last young lady spoke about affordable housing, af right. affordable uh, uh, of the $15 an hour, living wage. We all need that because if all of that would coincide with each other, there would be less crime, less people right. out in the street <laughs> doing illegal things. <laughs> Myself, I've never had a minimum wage job. That's by the grace of God. And, you know, was my parents were able to educate me. So I never had a minimum wage job except neighborhood youth court. We all went through that. <laughs> you know, so, you know. But you know, and I brought my children up in a sort of middle class home. We had a we had a house. We had food. We had clothes. So you know, my children they knew what it was to live middle class. But as my son got older and he was educated, went to college, but with the economics out here and the way that things are today and how they keep the jobs away from us, even if we deserve them, we don't get them. You know, some um, young men and young women are forced in the street to do things that they don't choose to do because of the economic system. Corporate sits there in a comfortable rocking chair and look down on us. They look down on the workers downstairs that's canning the vegetables and giving them eight, nine dollars an hour while they up there making two and three hundred thousand dollars a year. I mean, that is so unbalanced, I would think. We agree. You know, and, with, and, and with the housing situation, it's just through the You could have a job and can't even afford to pay your, your mortgage, your rent. It's, it, it's terrible. I mean, I mean, coming up, I know we lived in, like they talk about the landlords, we had horrible landlords when I was a kid. <laughs> horrible. We lived in, we called them cold water flats. Where you have the, the living room on one end, the bed, I mean the living room, and the, uh, the kitchen on the other, and the two bedrooms in the middle. No ventilation. And the landlords were always around to collect the rent. No heat. We used to have to use all burners to heat by. Wow. And nobody really cared. We tried to talk to the landlord. Oh, I'm going to fix the heat. I'm going to fix the heat. But they just had their hand out for the rent. You know, that has to stop too. Even now in, in, today's, in today's world. Like he said, the law of the land, what he said, the landlord, the, they not the law of the land, they the slums come up here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you know, but you know, I believe, well, with us fighting for justice, for us, us fighting for livable wage, and for affordable housing, I think that we could win this fight. But we have to bind together. We have to stick together to do this because we know justice is not free. Freedom is not free. We got to fight for what we want. Because if we sit down and we wait for someone else to fight for us, it's not going to happen. So you got to go and ring your own bell or you got to go and combine with others like ourselves and we and we are strength in numbers. So standing together as I will be out there on Tuesday to stand with America, the underpaid America, because it's unfair. I'm not only looking out for myself, I'm looking out for future America. You know, I have grandchildren coming up. I have and I thank y'all so much for listening to me.